Ever since I was a kid, I wanted to make a giant desert tank full of scorpions, spiders. I wanted to recreate the Grand Canyon with cliffs and plants, maybe even a waterfall with a pond where all the desert creatures gather for water and food. I imagine that there would be an epic battle between enemies for the rights to the territory. And maybe some creatures would find love and start a family. But the tank would have to be big. And I never had the money, nor the space or time. But today I do. So I'm building this ecosystem not only for me to enjoy, but for you at home as well. Thumbnail pit. It took a week to build the base of this. I made a lot of mistakes and started over four times. But I'm not going to bore you with all that. I have to say the hardest part was planting the cacti. Not fun at all. This is stage one of the build. Under this rock is a series of caves and tunnels for the creatures to hide. Now let's add our first inhabitants. too many bugs. Meet the toad, our first predator. Guys, this is by far the coolest game you can play on your cell phone. And I want to thank today's sponsors for making this video possible. This is Raid. This game is not only free to play, but it is free to win as well. With 80 million people already playing and 800 champions to choose from. Like this green guy, or this red demon, or this uh, pig warrior. When you log on for seven days, you can get the legendary Loki, as well as other Asgardian champions. My favorite champion so far is this goat, and his name is Greybeard. He's super strong, and he just died. Can somebody help him up? I guess I'll upgrade his armor. You can also level up champions by sacrificing the peasants. Sorry guys, but I gotta get some upgrades in. I really like fighting the clan bosses from giants to dragons with four heads to the, the king of the north. And oh my gosh, look at these spiders. I feel so bad killing them but I can't beat them on my own. And I am literally on my own. So come join me, my clan, Mr. Hillbilly, and let's fight them together. Use the link down in the description or scan the QR code to start playing today. And I'll see you guys in the clan battles. I've raised this guy from a tadpole and he's never seen another bug other than the fruit flies I feed him. Well, that was strange. These isopods are getting smart. This one's blending himself in with the environment like camouflage. I had a feeling the toad would get lonely in here by herself. So I gave her a boyfriend. It's day 10 and these toads are bat as full. This sums up what they do all day. Eat, hop, and chill. But as much as they eat, they're not even making a dent in the bug population. So let's add another predator. This is a baby skink. He is born black with a blue tail. Very pretty creature. But as time goes on, he will slowly turn yellow. The species burrows in the ground to get out of the heat. But right now, He's on the scent of something. A cricket. I'm not sure how this little guy got in here. He must have traveled with the cactus that I dug up. But he's just a baby. He had to have hatched within a day or so. It's pretty crazy how there's so many crickets in here and he's dead set on this one. 
he doesn't attack it when it stops moving. And then once it moves, BAM! He's got it. Let's check in on the toads. It's very impressive that such a small lizard can eat something the same size of its head. When these lizards are eating, they can actually breathe while swallowing like this. They swallow their food whole. If Joe Biden was a lizard, this would be him right here. It's been days since I've seen any life in this tank. Have they all died? Did they escape? Maybe they're all hiding from the hot heat. I thought these millworms had died, but they had transformed into beetles. Then there was this ant. Don't know what species it is or how it got in here. Maybe it's a queen? Let me know in the comments what you think it is. Now let's add a new predator. This is a wolf spider. He hunts down his prey like well, a wolf. Here you can see he caught a juicy cricket just minutes after me releasing him. He sinks his fangs into the body of the cricket, expelling a venom that will liquefy his insides. Then he drinks it up like a cricket smoothie. I then added a giant millipede because why not? This guy will eat anything dead on the floor, including the leaves and the plants, and help keep the desert clean. Much like these guys, the blue death feening beetle. They will eat just about anything. The tank is now looking live and well. Even Joe Biden is getting in on the feast. He also enjoys a little tree climbing in his spare time. The toads were being fat and lazy as usual, but no desert ecosystem is complete without a scorpion. This is the Death Stalker. He is one of the most venomous scorpions on earth. His sting instantly paralyzes his victims while the scorpion then eats his prey alive. But a storm was moving in, and all the animals started moving to higher ground. Storms in the desert can be very dangerous, as they can cause flash flooding. But as the morning sun broke through the fog, the animals came out to play and get some water. New life was emerging. Seeds that lay dormant in the desert sand began to grow, turning this wasteland into a beautiful scape of flowers and cacti. There were even mushrooms growing in the pond area. But the most impressive thing was how big these toads got. They have tripled in size. Even the skink got big and he turned yellow. He tastes the air with his tongue to track down his prey. Once he's locked in, there is no escape. The craziest part is he landed on another cricket, trapping him in place. Then this cricket came to his rescue, hitting the skink with his antennas. Unfortunately, it didn't work, and the skink ate all of them. I did, however, spot this giant millipede for a brief second, and Joe Biden turned into a giant, deadly killer. But something incredible was about to happen. A superstorm of biblical proportions. A storm that would last 40 days and 40 nights, completely flooding and transforming this desert ecosystem into a majestic swampland. I call it Amphibian Topia. 
What was once a beautiful desert has been turned into a mucky swamp. But on day 41, the rain stopped. The land animals have moved to higher ground, so the aquatic animals took over. Some are cute, others not so much. But one thing is for certain, do not fall in the water. The first creatures will be these fish. They are just for looks and fertilizing the plants. I also found this cool beetle and placed them in there as well as this tadpole. What will this tadpole turn into? Now, meet Morpheus, the axolotl's hillbilly cousin, the water dog. And this is Crush, the snapping turtle. And this is a worm on a cliff. He is getting dangerously close to the edge. So I helped him out and gave him a little push. The water creatures immediately respond and Crush is going in to introduce himself. He separates the worm into two so he can share with Morpheus. But Morpheus has other plans. He bites and scares Crush to leave the area so he has the worm all to himself. But all this commotion has awakened Bruce, the king of Amphibia. Bruce is a red swamp crawfish in his fully matured state. One thing to know about Bruce is he's fast and does not share. And Crush is about to find out on his own. With his killer entrance song, he makes his way to the food stash. And then sticks his nose right into the claw of the crawfish to show he's not afraid. Crush is standing his ground, so Bruce punches him in the nose. But that doesn't stop him. So Bruce takes it up a notch with the suplex and Crush scurries away. Now Morpheus wants to try. So Bruce puts on his fighting face and pinches him. And it's over. One hour later, Morpheus returns to eat the scraps Bruce left behind. He sniffs the ground like a dog to track down the worms. Bingo. Morpheus will not go to bed hungry today. Other creatures have their own way of getting food, like this baby crawdad. He sneaks in and takes the whole stash back to his cave, leaving behind crumbs for the fish. But can he finish it before Morpheus shows up? When nighttime arrives, he makes his move to get more food. But Morpheus goes into beast mode. And somehow the little guy gets out alive with just a tail hit. Morpheus then enjoys the spoils of the victory. Now the swamp started turning red so a water change was in effect. Now fast forward 10 days and Bruce is acting weird. He's been climbing onto land and staying there. I've even seen him on top of the waterfall. Perhaps he's looking for a place to burrow for the winter. 
And now it's time to add a land predator to keep Bruce in his place. Meet Lizzie, the Basculus. When fully grown, this guy morphs into a green dragon that doesn't breathe fire. Lizzie will patrol the canopy and keep it safe from outside invaders like crickets. Remember this guy? I still don't know what it is, but it really doesn't matter because this was the last time we will ever see him alive. On day 60, our tadpoles are still just tadpoles. They are not ready to grow up just yet. But Morpheus, on the other hand, has begun his transformation. Overnight, he lost his gills and now roams the land portion. This is his first day on land. His tail no longer has a fin and his gills have vanished as he develops his lungs. I decided to feed him in a separate tank just to make sure that he was eating. These crickets are high in calcium as I gut loaded them beforehand. I thought this would make a good first meal. Friends, I would like you to meet Morpheus, the tiger salamander. The cycle starts off as eggs, which hatch into larvae with gills. Within a month, they will grow and develop front legs. And in two months, they develop back legs. And it could take up to a year for a larva to become a salamander based on living conditions. But right now, an outsider is invading the tank. Mosquito larva. Once they are here, they can cause damage, leeching off the animals and spreading diseases. Not to mention, when they become a mosquito, they will attack me too. I needed a natural predator to eliminate the larva before it's too late. The mosquito fish. His main diet is larva. But they also feed on bloodworms and leeches. And this baby bottom feeder is a catfish. His main duty is to keep the swamp floor clean, just like these little guys, crawfish. They scavenge all day for food, eating anything from dead plants to dead fish to algae. But when Bruce arrives, every creature hides. He takes his time and makes sure that he eats everything left behind. But something has caught his attention. A baby crawfish trying to cut off his eyeball. This type of behavior is normal as crawfish aren't very smart. And they also don't like to share. Stuffing their faces one at a time until all the food is gone. Up on land, another battle is happening before our eyes. Lizzie is battling with gravity. As this cricket is drowning, Lizzie must act fast before the turtle gets it. She rescues the cricket and takes it up to safety. Just look at how awesome of a climber she is. Hiding in the cork log, Morpheus is all by himself and lonely. So I got him some friends. Meet the twins. This duo wastes no time hunting and looking for food like a pack of wild dogs.
And over here is Crush, minding his own business, eating some worms. And he's about to meet the twins for the very first time. They come face to face when one of the twins snaps at him over and over and over again. But Crush has learned to stand his ground. So the twins circle him in an attempt to scare off Crush. And what happens next is unbelievable. They leave. Crush showed no fear and can now eat his dead leaf in peace. That night a major rainstorm appeared, bringing in more moisture for the plants and animals to grow. But little do they know, it would be the last rainstorm for years. The water levels were higher than they've ever been before. Even Morpheus came out for a deep swim. Pillow moss was now forming, creating a beautiful landscape of greenery. And Crush discovered a new way of fishing. He goes under the water, hanging over the cliff, snatching fish as they swim by. And Bruce decided to be a mountain climber. But his lack of balance sent them back into the deep water. Then one day, the stream stopped feeding the swamp. And day after day after day, the water levels dropped, ironically, for 40 days. All the animals began to panic as water levels got dangerously low, leaving behind a big canyon, a massive canyon. But most people would say it was grand. The canyon is a beautiful yet sinister place with dark caves hiding evil creatures and relics of a life that once lived here. How on earth can anything survive? Now to fully understand this ecosystem, we must go back to the beginning. It started with a 150 gallon tank I got off Craigslist for $100. With a lot of sand, some rocks, some cacti, and then I added a waterfall, and the desert was complete. From toads to lizards, queen ants to millipedes and beetles, this ecosystem was thriving with life. But on day 100, I decided to play God and flooded the tank. And for two more months, I kept these guys while working on Amphibia. And for the first time ever, they are all hanging out with each other without a worry in the world. Hmm? Like one happy family. And it breaks my heart to do this, but it's time to say goodbye. These guys were all wild caught and winter is coming. And they need time to find a place to sleep before the ground freezes. I cut up some foam boards and glued them together. Then shaped it with a wood burner and a hair dryer. Then I covered everything in tan grout and added color with cement dye. And it comes out looking like this. A few final touches and it's complete. 
Now it's time to add in the cleanup crew. Mealworms. They will eat all the dead leaves and create fresh soil for the plants, then transform into beetles for our future predators to eat. Roly polies will eat animal poop and help keep the tank clean while also being food at the same time. Now let's meet the predators. This is Kamala, the rattlesnake. She quickly begins exploring the canyon and all of its dark hiding places. She found her way into the heated cave, but she's not alone. This is Zip Tie, the king snake, and his main diet is rattlesnakes, but he's in the shedding process and can't see. Kamala got lucky this time. During the day, she basks in the sun, but come night, she goes skinny dipping in the pond. Now this is the vinegar room. He's got a tail like a rat and pinchers like a crab. With tiny little beady eyes, he's practically blind. He uses his claws to move the dirt and lives underground. And his front legs are like antennas picking up vibrations of his prey. And as you can see, he really has to work to find his food as he's always one step behind the crickets. But sometimes the crickets go with a do not move approach. And as long as they stay still, they are safe. He moved, big mistake. Just like a spider, he sucks the life out of his victims. In case you ever try to catch one of these, watch out, they spray acid out their butt. Moving on into the hidden cave, a baby mouse is sleeping in his nest. This poor guy has had a rough life. Meet Pee Wee. I've had him since he was born and Kamala since he's here. She circles Pee Wee and tastes him with her tongue. Before leaving. But Kamala isn't the only predator here. As this predator makes his way down the rocks, being as quiet as he can be, a grasshopper makes his move. Until today, I didn't know grasshoppers would eat mice. But the mouse is putting up the fight. Pee-wee barely escapes with just a bite mark on his butt. Now fast forward two weeks later and Pee-wee is doing great. His hair has grown in to cover his scar. But the next day, Kamala returns. Kiwi quickly moves to hide under his nest. Then she tastes him with her serpent tongue and leaves the cave. Perhaps Peewee isn't what she's hungry for. So Peewee cleans himself up and decides it's time for him to leave the cave as well. He climbs to the top to get a good view of the environment. Then gracefully makes his way down to the bottom. Ah! Oops. He'll explore every inch of the enclosure, including this spider cave. 
Oh yeah, forgot to mention, I added a big ass spider. Meet Thing, the bird eater. Pee Wee quickly leaves, but nighttime is approaching and he needs to get back to the safety of his cave before it's too late. The next morning, a fog rolled in, and that can only mean one thing. Winter has come, and all the animals have gone underground and won't return until spring. Guys, don't forget to check out Raid. It is by far the coolest game out there. Scan the QR code or click the link I left in the description. Now click here to see what happened to my rattlesnake.